Happy Book Talk Tuesday. I have been reading a few books that have come in recently that are more literary nonfiction instead of the chapter books. Um, they may not be called literary nonfiction anymore, but at one point they were. So I love stories that are actual true stories, but they are written like as a storybook. It's not just a whole book just of facts and all the things that happened in their lives. It's a story of people's lives. I just, I love that. And it just, it intrigues me, just all these different stories. So we hear all the time. I hear people say it. I'm sure I say it all the time. Oh, it's not fair. It's just not fair. It's not fair. People, we feel like we are entitled to certain things and why can't people just, you know, make sure we have the things we need and it's not fair. I should get an equal chance and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, a lot of people complain and they say things aren't fair and then they just complain until, you know, nobody wants to listen to them anymore or somebody, you know, helps them along, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, these books are all people who could absolutely have said, it's not fair. I, it's too hard. I can't do that but they didn't. And that is what makes them so awesome. So this one, uh, Everest, the whole title is The Remarkable Story of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. So these are two men that were the first ones to go to the top of Mount Everest. And their story of how they ended up even wanting to do this and getting to that point is just that's just amazing in itself. And then the whole idea of what they went through to get to the top of Everest. I mean, people die doing this all the time. So um, I, this just was a fantastic, fantastic book, Everest. 30 Minutes Over Oregon. I actually have not read this one. This is on my list. I'm going to be checking it out very soon. It's a Japanese pilot's World War II story. So it takes place where it's about a man who he's a Japanese uh, fighter pilot. And a couple of months after Pearl Harbor, he dropped bombs just outside of Oregon. Um, so it's a story of that bombing and then what happened after. And then 20 years later, when he went back and apologized. Wow. So I, yeah, I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to check that one out. Um, Girl Running, there's a couple of different stories about Bobby Gibb. Uh, Bobby Gibb was the first female athlete or the first female to run the Boston Marathon, but women were not allowed to run. They weren't, there was not, there was a rule and women were not allowed to run in the Boston Marathon. I don't know if they thought it was too dangerous. Women were too dainty, but she was determined and she did it in a rather unconventional way, but she ended up being the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. And I, I love it. She could have just, you know, when they said women can't run it, she could have gone, oh, all right, I guess I won't then. Uh, nope, she didn't do that. And uh, she made history and she broke barriers for women to, to be running in marathons now. Um, I don't want to run that far, but uh, my daughter did. She's a little crazy. Um, I run half that much and that's plenty. Okay, so this one, uh, Sergeant Reckless. Oh, I love this. I think it might have won the Blue Bonnet a few years ago. I'm not positive. Not positive, but I think it might have. So Sergeant Reckless is about a horse uh, during World War II that they found over in Korea. Oh, it's in the Korean War. I'm sorry. It was in the Korean War. So uh, some soldiers found this like old bedraggled mare and they were going to use it as a pack horse. But Sergeant Reckless ended up becoming so much more than a pack horse and showed that he just had a heart of gold. And uh, they actually made this horse a sergeant officially. This horse is officially a sergeant in the military. Great, great, fantastic story. Uh, this one I read today during testing, uh, Mother Jones and her army of mill children. So in the night, like at the early 1900s, there were, um, there were no child labor laws. So factories would have, you know, young, young children working in mills for, for, for 10 to 14 hours a day, getting paid like two cents a day. They would, were being, they were injured. They were, um, 
breathing in just gross, nasty stuff all day. It was it was dangerous. Uh, they weren't they didn't go to school. They couldn't play outside. They were working because uh, our country just needed them to do that. And there were no laws against, you know, not having children working like that. So Mother Jones uh, took it upon herself to fight for rights for children because she knew that this wasn't right and people were not standing up for that. So um, amazing, amazing story. And then this one, I really like this one, Paper Sun. This one is a story, it's the inspiring story of Tyrus Wong, immigrant and artist. So he is an immigrant from China and uh, it was a long time ago. I don't remember when it was, I would say early 1940s, 1930s. I don't know, early, early long time ago. Uh, so uh, he came from China and when he was immigrating from China, you had to your family had to um, be businessmen or uh, scholars or um, have some sort of status in society. And his he didn't have that. So he came over with his dad, but they had to make up a story of their family and who they were. And they reviewed the questions, like what they would ask and, and how they would each answer because they were going to be separate. And so when they ended up coming here to America, uh, dad went through no problem through immigration and the boy got, uh, they held on to him. They didn't let him go through immediately. Um, so it's, uh, he eventually did. He eventually did because it's his story of what happened uh, once he immigrated here. Uh, just another amazing story. He and his dad could have absolutely said, life's not fair. This is not fair. We came to America for a better life and nobody's really giving us that opportunity. Um, he found opportunities. He looked for them. When, when there was an opportunity, he took advantage of that and he he acted. He didn't just wait for somebody to, to hand him an opportunity. I absolutely love stories like that. I just, I think they're inspiring and I think they are a great way for us to learn um, how to make this world better, uh, learn from our past, our history. Our history is very important to learn from and they just, they just make me happy. So uh, I know these are not very long books and maybe your teachers want you reading longer books, but these are great books to sit down and read while you're in the library or to grab every now and then just to just enjoy someone's story. You guys have a great day and I hope you read lots of books.